y'all welcome back to my channel my name is Sierra and I am working on this little frog I want to make a, a glass frog um, and I already put the eyes in because I didn't I, I was struggling with with that a little bit so I went off camera and decided to do that I'm gonna put the little rhinestone in his toes I'm just gonna drop a little bit of UV resin in the toes All, the little, all these little toes. I'll start off with this foot first. Got my little jewel picker here, and we're going to pick a jewel up and drop it in. And I don't know what size these are. Um, they, I don't, I don't even know. I, I have different sizes in here. I don't know if you can tell. I do have different sizes, but it don't matter. As long as it fits in there, it doesn't really matter. Oh, I'm in frame. Okay, I'm going to give that. I have a baby wipe uh, paper towel here with some alcohol on it. I'm going to give that a quick cure. And then once I get these completely cure not completely it's just a real quick cure I'm just going to set it then I'm going to set it in my UV lamp for a couple of minutes so let me get the next ones going and I'll probably put this on time lapse That is cured. I have some resin here. I did run it through my vacuum chamber. I just want to fill up a little bit of the belly and where the eyes are. That's all I want to fill up. That's good, right like that. And then I'm going to let this cure. How much should I put in there just now? An ounce, not even an ounce. So we're gonna let this cure, and then once this is cured, we'll come back and do the next part. I have some fantasy film here, and this is what we're gonna use in there. So I'm gonna let this cure, and then as soon as this is ready, I will be back. That's, um, the resin has thickened up a little bit, so I want to start cutting some of this and putting it, dropping it in. So I want it to stick to that layer. So I don't know how I want to do this. We'll just cut some and drop it in there. I want to get further into this. I want, I have a little police story I want to tell. Something that I've been thinking about telling. Hope YouTube doesn't have a problem with it. <laughs> but I will keep it clean. And as family friendly as I possibly can. So that's going to stick down in there. Let me get some more over that. I let me get my tweezers. Pick up a big piece and drop it over there. Come on. Well, it would help my tweezers weren't sticky, wouldn't it? Okay. There we go. Just want just a little coating. Those tweezers are not helping out. Yeah, because this is 
tacky. See how it's sticking down to the resin. Let go of the tweezers. Let go of the tweezers. We're just going to try and stick it down. Well, it's ever not stuck down uh, from here, I will um, I will let's say it's stuck down. If it's ever not stuck down, I will pull out of that. I don't want to leave it in there. Like some of this, I, I doubled up. And I'll tell you what I'm using. I don't know why my scissors are having such a hard time cutting through this stuff. These are some sharp scissors. It's just having a really hard time. This is... Let me just get this piece in there. This is... Well, it's the fantasy film and sheer opal i'll have all the links and you get a you get it's four feet four feet it's four inches by ten feet you get a lot you get a lot for how much however much it is it's not that much so that is what my little frog is looking like i do want to put some more in there the rest I'm going to probably uh, mix in with the rest of the resin when I pour it because I don't want to pour it until this has a little bit more time to set up. So there's that for now. And then as soon as this sets up, I'm going to let it set up another couple hours. Um, and then I will be back with the rest to, to fill it up. All right, this is cured enough to where I can go on to the next level. I'm just finishing the mixing of the resin. I'm gonna let it sit and it's going to degas for a few minutes. I'm gonna get this stuff here and let me get a coffee filter. I just don't want these pieces sticking to the silicone mat as I cut them. And I am going to go into one of the stories of, of what, I, what I experienced as a police officer. Uh, working in a big city, I've responded to countless shootings. I can't even begin to tell you how many shootings I've responded to. So many that a lot of them blend, you know, kind of like blend in together where I have the memory of a couple of them will, will, be, com will be combined. There's just so many. It's impossible to remember um, every, every one that I've responded to. There are a few that stick out that I'll, I'll never forget. Um, and one of them happens to be uh it was uh i worked what was i work what was i working at the time i was working afternoons yeah i was working afternoons this was much later in my career uh i had more than 10 years on and um this particular one was a drug deal gone wrong you could say it was um, the guy was a known drug dealer I don't know if it was a rival drug um, I never really found out it's just kind of odd but anyway he was out there you know up to no good dealing dealing his drugs and he ended up um, being he was shot multiple times and it was a dark night, dark summer night. Um, I don't remember what time, what year, time it was in the, what, you know, I just remember it was summer. I don't know what month or anything like that. I don't remember that. 
And I don't know what, like I said, I've responded to many, 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 multiple. I, I don't know how many. But anyway, this one, I don't know what, what happened to me at this one, but I think it had to do with my son. My son was getting older now. He was in his... Uh, he was in his 20s now, and I just seen uh, a young man who had been severely injured. He was half in the street, half in an alley, and he was, he was not going to be with us much longer. The, the injuries were just too bad to just he was he was a very severely injured young man and if I remember correctly he was he was in his late 20s anyway we had to ask for uh, more more police presence there because a, a large crowd had started to gather like I said it was a summer night uh, you know, just a na regular neighborhood, populated neighborhood. You know, everybody, a lot of people knew this guy. And I remember getting down on the ground next to him because I knew he wasn't he wasn't with going to be with this world for long. And I wanted to I I wanted to comfort him. I just the thought of this this young man laying in the street dying alone just didn't sit right with me so i got down and i grabbed his hand and he had already uh, which is very common he had already gone to the bathroom on himself and he was he was aware of that and he was really upset that he that had happened and i told him not to worry about it he kept closing his eyes and i kept forcing him to talk to me, you know, keep his eyes open and if he could and talk, and just keep talking to me. And we had uh medics were on the way and we had uh we had some officers show up and they put the yellow, you know, police tape up just to keep the crowd back. And I I kept talking to him, you know, was holding his hand, kept talking to him. And medics got there, and, and they whisked him away to the hospital. And that's all I heard about from this about this guy. And in the meantime, now I'm getting teased. Officers will tease other officers about things that they do out there. They're not being mean. They're not. It's just. It's funny. It's the way we cope. So whenever there was after that, there was a there was something like that that happened. I would get. They would call me or text me, and not really text me because we texting wasn't a really thing. I think Nextel was the big thing, which is kind of funny. And they would say, "Hey, we have a we have somebody that's been you know shot or whatever. You're gonna come hold his hand, you know, just just you know teasing me." And this went on for. You know, I had, didn't hear anything, didn't know anything about him. By the way, I had three ounces of resin in here. Probably have too much, maybe not enough. But, um, so about a year goes by, didn't hear anything. And I remember having to go to court, all of us, even the guys that were teasing me. And I had very, uh, very good rapport with the officers uh, that I worked with. Uh, very, very good rapport with them. Um, and so we're in court on, uh, it was an attempted murder that we were in court on and the way they would sequester us, we couldn't sit in the, um, in the courtroom and we didn't like to sit out like in the common area, the hallways or whatever in the court courthouse because you know 
we don't know. We we deal with so many people. We don't know who, you know, if we don't know who who's who out there. And you know, for our safety and our peace of mind, we kind of like sit in the. There's like you have two courtrooms. You have a courtroom on this side, a courtroom on this side. This is how the room is set up. It's a long, narrow room. You have a door. You have a door on this left and a door on the right. And you have a courtroom here and a courtroom here, and then just benches in this room. And that's where we would sit. And we would read the paper. Uh, we didn't have like cell phones or anything. I mean, we had cell phones, but they weren't smartphones. Not like today, where everybody would be on their phones looking at videos or anything like. We didn't have any of that. So I would take a book or whatever, especially on one of those kind of trials, because we knew we were we were going to be there for a while. You know, this isn't like a, you know, you, you're there, you could be there for days, weeks, you know, until they don't need you. And I remember there was, a, and the guy that had been, the guy that had been shot, he was a heavy set, real heavy set, uh, African American male. And, and I remember I was, we were sitting in there and didn't, I didn't know what actually case it was on. I just knew it was attempted murder. And I remember the prosecutor came in and he had this real thin, super thin, uh, African-American male with them. And they were going through an evidence bag looking for, I don't know what they were looking for. And he was talking to the prosecutor and I, I really didn't pay much mind. I just saw this guy talking to the prosecutor, you know, and, uh, and I started talking to the officers that I was in there with and the guy w that was looking through the, I think it was a paper bag, uh, with the prosecutor, he looked up. When I when I started talking, I was laughing and talking to the with the officers, and he asked my he asked if my name was Officer So and So, and I said and I kind of looked at him kind of funny, and I was like yeah, and he started crying. I couldn't believe it, and I'm I'm standing there. I don't know who this guy is, and he's like you. Do you, you don't remember me? And I, you know, I apologize to him and, you know, letting him know, you know, I, I see a lot of people. It's impossible for me to remember everybody. And he told me he was the guy that was shot, that was laying half in that street, half in the alley. I couldn't believe it. I, I was like, what? And he wanted me to meet come out in the hallway to meet his family. He, his whole family was there. And I was like, are you sure? And he's like, yes, my mother would love to meet you. And I was like, okay. And he told me too, that he was no longer, um, dealing drugs or anything like that, that he, uh, actually, he goes up to the schools and he's a mentor to young kids about staying away from that lifestyle. He changed his whole life. And he said he had multiple surgeries. Um, they weren't sure if he was going to even survive. And so I go out and I meet his, I go out in the hall, like I said, where everybody sits and I had this woman, I didn't know her, and she knew me right there, I mean, as soon as I come out of that room, and I had this woman that I've never, I've never laid eyes on this woman before, and she came up to me, and she grabbed me in the biggest hug, and she was crying, and it was the, it was the guy's mother, and apparently, she was at the scene, 
And she had seen, you know, her son lay in there. And because of, you know, nobody was allowed, you know, it's a crime scene. You just can't let people, you know, trample our crime scene. She was not allowed to comfort her son. And she didn't know if her son was going to live or die. And she said that seeing me comfort her son, she said that she'll always remember that. And she thanked me for that. You know, I just, I couldn't believe it. I mean, that was just, you know, and it was kind of cool that the guy's teasing me, you know, I kind of went back in the, back in that room when it was all said and done. And they were like, yeah, that's, that's really, that's really cool, you know. And I kind of like stuck my tongue out at them, like, yeah, you know, because they, they, they would have made pretty good for that, you know. And I just, I just thought of my son. I wouldn't want, regardless of what this guy was doing, because I've had people tell me, well, he's doing bad and, you know, he knows what kind of lifestyle he was leading and, you know, okay, and, you know, so that means just, oh, he's, you know, he, he should know better, you know. No, I'm not going to, I, something, I don't know, because that's the only time I've ever felt the need to, I mean, I've comforted people, don't get me wrong, but I, it was just, but yeah, that was, that was, um, that was kind of cool, I think. I don't know. What do you think? Would you have done that? You know, I mean, because we know that people do good and, and bad in life. But, you know, I'm not, I'm not going to sit there and judge the man as he lay in the street dying. It's not my place. But, yeah, I, I remember I remember that. Don't remember his name. Um, which is kind of sad. I probably wouldn't remember him. I, I know I wouldn't recognize him if I were to see him today. You know, like I said, uh, he wasn't the first, um, victim. And he certainly wasn't the last, but he was memorable. The whole circumstances was memorable, I think. Hope I'm not overfilling these little toes. I hope this turns out pretty. So let me know what you think of the of my little my little story. I can promise you it is all 100% fact. There is nothing made up about about this at all. I have no reason to lie. I have no reason to exaggerate. But uh yep. Yeah. So let me know what you think. Um, and if you really want to help me, uh, help my channel grow, uh, if you, if you uncomfortable leaving a comment, leave a frog emoji. That would be kind of cool in my, in the comment section, leave a little frog emoji. Uh, if you don't want to leave a co an actual comment or share these videos with your friends and family, help my channel grow. I mean, I love watching this channel grow. And if you really want to help me though, that's the, the easiest way to help is to like and comment uh, share the video if you you know my videos if you want to um if you, if you really want to help and what else um subscribe i noticed that in my when i look at the people who watch my videos the majority of the people that watch my videos are and they wa watch them a lot they're they don't they're not subscribers so if you're already watching why don't you subscribe it's free you know help me out and well, I can bring continue bringing some some content I don't know if it's good or bad I think it's good and I can continue with my little stories and I only tell the stories when the project I think is gonna go longer than a longer than 10 minutes you know I want to, if I'm going to tell a story, I want to, I want to do it some justice. I just don't want to ramble off some stuff, but there's my little frog. I hope he's, I hope he turns out nice. 
I just had this thing for a glass frog. You know, he, you know how you got those see-through frogs where you can see all their organs and their little heartbeat stuff? That's where this idea came from. So let me know what you think. Um, not let me know what you think. I'll be back. Uh, I'll be back with the uh, demold. I'm looking forward to this. I love I love frogs anyway. So I will see you shortly. All right, this is cured. I see bubbles in there. <laughs> I hope he turned out pretty. Uh, he's been on my heat on the heat mat. I hope I don't break off his little toes. So, all I can do is hope. Yeah, these are, I could have put more resin in that, believe it or not. I could have, I just didn't want to overfill them. I'm going to pull it off the little leg, thigh, if frogs have thighs. And then off his little butt. And then we'll pry it away from the little fingers. Let's see. Just don't want to break off any toes. Let me get these off here. I got a piece of resin there. I love frogs, so they are my favorite frogs and elephants. Anybody who knows me knows that I like my frogs and my elephants. All right, we're gonna. I'm just gonna have to. I don't want to just go for it. I almost just said just yank it. If I struggle too much, I will pull away because I want to come up to my body, but I can't. All right. Okay, I think we're good. Yep, we're good. Okay. Let's see what we got. Let's see the bubble mess we have. All right, let me get some card stuff. Just so I can see. All right. He's beautiful. Look at that. Oh. I can see some bubbles in there, but it's not a big deal. Not a big deal at all. It actually looks like I'm looking inside that frog. Oh, he's gorgeous. He is gorgeous. I wish the camera would pick that up. He looks like a little glass frog. Doesn't he? Let's see. There you go. Isn't he beautiful? Isn't he? I'm, I'm whispering. <laughs> Isn't he beautiful? Oh, he's, his eyes stay. That's good. I always worry about when I do that. If it's going to, if I'm going to find like an eye back here somewhere. But yes, he is beautiful. I really like, I love this mold. This is probably my favorite mold that I have. Because I love frogs. But look at that. He looks like there's fire in the mer. He's just beautiful. And all I used were the 8 millimeter eyes. The cabochon glass eyes. Some little... Um, rhinestones and I don't know what size they are. I think they're size 16 SS16 or SS SS12 that's what these are and then the um, where is it oh, right here. and then the the fantasy film and the sheer opal I did um, cut off some I did heat it up with my he can, I do have a video, if I can remember, uh, see if I can link it up here, of um, how I did the fantasy fiber, a uh, fantasy, fantasy film. So what do you think? You like my little glass frog? He's beautiful. I want to thank you for hanging out with me today. If you have any questions, comments, suggestions, please leave in the comment section down below. If you like this video, please give me a thumbs up. If you haven't subscribed, please consider subscribing. And to my subscribers, I truly appreciate you, and you have a great day, and God bless. Bye.